talk about committing to the body punch. I love it. Club Promotions proudly presents Irish Mickey Ward and Dickie Eklund live in the UK. Hear their story in their own words. Hi, my name is Mickey Ward. Hey, my name is Dickie Eklund. I started boxing when I was seven years old. I started fighting when I was 12 years old. My weight's 140 pounds junior welterweight. And my fighting weight was 147. My brother Tim took me out of the gym. I started fighting and I had my first fight at seven. I said I was 17 at 12. I fought a jockey 26 years old. I continued fighting younger. I fought in the Silver Mittens. I did good there. I ended up winning that one time. Turned pro eventually to claim the fame fight with Sugar Ray Leonard, 10 round loss. Won a championship. I got voted to fight the uh, Ring Magazine three years in a row. They did a movie on myself and my brother right here called The Fighter. He's black! I'm really excited about going back to London, England, and I uh, hope to see this over there. Quacker! <laughs> Get some more info, go to www.touchcloudpromotions.com or call the hotline. Oh, yeah. So, yes. And the reason why we ran that promo, obviously, we like to get a few clips in of The Fighter, which was a fun movie. And then real clips of Dickie Eklund and, and, <laughs> and Mickey Ward whacking bags and talking. Because I like them. I've spoken to the pair of them a couple of years ago, or a year ago, when the film came out. But the real reason we ran it is that the woman that put that together and who's promoting their tour is, I'm delighted to say, joining me in the studio now. Camera on, Nina, please. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nina, now just say, just tell us what you had for breakfast, because we're not sure if you've buried your mics under your hair. So just talk. Tell us what you had for breakfast. Um, I had some Weezabix today. Can we hear her? Is that OK? Weezabix. Yes, it's OK. <laughs> Can you get that? <laughs> yeah, we got it. Because that's the way we work here, Nina. But first of all, Nina, you're bringing these two boys over mm -hmm. to toy. You've got yep. the Eklund and the Ward. Yep. First of all, you're brave, because they're a handful, even though, even though they're <clears> sober <throat> and clean, they're a handful. <laughs> Dickie, Dickie is, Dickie's more of a... Handful than Mickey, yeah. I would like to say. Mickey's a bit more of a gentleman. He's uh, a lot more easy going, but Dickie is more of a joker than a handful. Okay, and and, and they're coming over. I didn't quite catch the other. How many not? How many gigs have three. you got? Three, three yep. of them. Three. Um, and all the ticket details are there. Is there a website people can look yep. at? Yeah, www.touchclubpromotions.co.uk. And that's your company. That's my company. Okay, what what's your history then? Because I've a sort of I've heard about you a few months ago. Where have you come from to end up pulling over these two? I mean, let's face it, they're a bit hot at the moment with the film last year, yeah, yeah. the Oscars, and then also there'd be a couple more films. How did you manage to, mm. how did you manage to get them? Um, well, obviously, being on the boxing scene, I've uh, kind of done my own shows and stuff and had a feel for it, should I say. Yeah. And then I'd seen a couple of audiences with and thought, they're kind of cool. Yeah. You know, you get to meet the real people. But you can make them better. But I can possibly do a little bit better, <laughs> maybe. Um, and then I watched the film The Fighter. Um, yeah. Obviously, being in boxing, everyone says, oh, you've got to go and watch this film. It's great. Mm. Never really thought, mm, I'm going to watch it. Staggered across it on Sky. Thought I've got to meet these guys. This is just such a fun-loving film. Yeah. Found out they'd never been here before. Wow. And uh, that was it. And so you, you, you're bringing them up. When are they actually coming in? They're coming in on May the 3rd. And there's... And the, is it, are they here? Oh, we probably won't get them in the shoot. It'd be lovely if we do. We're going to speak to Dickie a bit later on in a couple of minutes' time after <laughs> after I finish grilling Nina here a little bit on this on this whole tour thing. Now, was it hard putting a deal together for the two of them? Not I'm really. sure they've been approached. Um, they have been, yeah. apparently. I don't know. OK. Um, but they have been by someone in the UK who rung me up. Um, and said, I spoke to them. And what said, you how the hell did you get them? And my answer was, I think I look a little bit better looking than you, and I'm a... Yeah. In, in, in all fairness, yeah, no, people really. have sort of noticed that sort of thing. Because, <laughs> uh, no, 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 Neen, what would a format be? Will it be the two... Because they're good talkers. A lot of the guys... They are, are great talkers. I've done a lot of these after shows mm -hmm. with fighters, and no disrespect, some of the fighters, you know, are not great. You have to really... It's like pulling blood from a stone. With these two, it might be a problem shutting a pair of them up. Well, I think a lot of Nicely. boxers... Nicely. Yeah, of course. A lot of boxers, um, you've got to remember, they've done their talking with their fists. Yeah, of course. Um, and obviously audiences with, isn't their forte. Yeah. So when I thought of Mickey and Dickie and I saw the film, they've obviously had to open up to 
Mark Wahlberg. And the other producers the and producers, writers. Yeah, good uh, point. You know, and they spent a long time with Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale. Yeah. And so I thought it was kind of going to be like second nature to them. So. Yeah. Uh, have you managed to get Bale involved in any way, shape or form? Because obviously uh, him and Dickie, I mean, you know, he's, I mean, Christian Bale's brilliant. And, I, I mean, know. You know. It's just staggering. I've, I've actually been approached by BBC to do a documentary and um, right. I can't actually say what could, the documentary could I, is. Could I just say, Nina, I'm not going to kick you out of the studio. No. But you've mentioned Sky and you mentioned BBC. You need to be a little bit respectful. It's my well, show. Well, no, Fox Nation. Well, that's very is, good. Is, is number cause, one. Yeah, because we've got... Oh, we love Fox. No, yeah, we've, exactly. We've given the exclusive to you, Bunsy. Anyway, I know you have. I'm only kidding. <laughs> so, you know, I've got to leave you for a second I've because this week in the game. studio with me, she's bringing over... Dickie Eklund and Mickey Ward for a series of uh, live events. I think there'd be live events of a twist because these two can talk and they bounce off each other. Anybody mm. that saw The Fighter remembers that, a little scene here. Yeah. First of all, Nina, where are, where are they planning it? Just give us roughly a, um, a website or whatever. Just tell yeah. us that again. Touch Club Promotions. Touch Club uh, Promotions. Dot, dot co.uk. Yep. Um, the first event's at the Hilton in London on the 5th. Oh, OK. The main at the Park Lane, Hilton. Uh, oh, no. no. Metropole's bigger. Metropole. It's better as well. Yeah. Road, yeah. And then we've got the Crown Plaza at Colchester Essex. OK. And then Priestfield, which is Gillingham. It's oh, the uh, Gillingham Football somewhere. Stadium. Yeah. Oh, so that's, that's, that's busy. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, now, Mickey Ward and uh, Dickie... Eklund. It's a terrific story, and I thought the I thought the story behind the fighter mm -hmm. uh, was brilliant. I thought some of the stuff was great, and as much as I like Mark Wahlberg, and as much as I admired Mickey Ward, and I saw him fight lots of times, I've got to be honest with you, Dicky, just absolutely. I mean, he stole the screen. I know it wasn't him playing it. I know it was no. Christian Bale, but then at the end, he stole it in those few I brief know. minutes. I wanted to see more of that. He's so cool. He is so cool, and also, and I and I love this kind of whole Sugar Ray. Leonard thing, and we're going to talk about that because right now on the line, I'm assuming from Lowell, Massachusetts, we've got Dickie Eckland on the phone. Dickie, are you there? I'm doing all right. How are you all doing? Fantastic. Dickie, I've got Nina here with me if you want to say hello. Hi, Dickie. Hello, Nina, honey. How are you doing? I'm hot, fine, honey. How are you? I'm all right. Dickie, let me, let me ask you this, Dickie. Um, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Last year, when the movie first came out, how long did it take you to realise just how big it was going to be? Or did you know in your heart of hearts it would be a great success? Um, I really had no idea, you know. It was just... It just, I come out... Uh, everybody talked about it. I mean, me, myself, I didn't realise. I didn't have any idea how it was going to be. And, and what about... I mean, you know, let, let's, not, let's not hide from the fact the portrayal of you... Uh, you know, when you after you'd finished boxing, it was fairly brutal. I mean, it was it was brutal, but at the same time, it made brilliant movie. It made a brilliant movie. Was that difficult for you to watch at times, Dicky? Oh yeah, when I first watched it, I said, I ain't, I ain't letting this gonna be seen. When it was uh, Christian Bale, Mark Wahlberg, Christian's wife, and uh, Mickey and myself, we watched it. Um, Paramount Pictures, we flew out there, and it, it was just a farm. Five or six was in the studio. Oh wow! And um, after it was done, I said, ah, "I don't want that to be on." So they said, "We'll send you to New Jersey, neutral ground, with a couple thousand people." So we flew there, and there was all people there. And I just went to have me go empty seat to empty seat. You know, every hundred people there was an empty seat, and I just listened to what they said. And it wasn't that bad after all because we overcame a lot of stuff. In in all fairness, it, it makes where you are now. An even better place in some ways, Dickie, because of how far you've had to travel to get where you are now. What uh, what'd you say? I, I said, in, 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 in many ways, Dickie, you know, from, from where you are, from the lows that are shown in that film to where you are right. now, that's, a, that's an incredible journey. That's an uplifting, that's a good story. Yeah, it is. It, it is. Um... The sad thing is, I just had, um, December 2nd, I ended up having back surgery, which I waited for years for. It was in constant pain, and um, I had it done. They ended up screwing up, and um, now my foot is, like, numb. And oh, it's yeah. like that since December 2nd. But well, well, I'll tell you what, Dickie, let's, let's talk about some positive stuff. Let's go back to 1978, in the opposite corner, Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> he thinks he's going to have an easy night. But he's got you to deal with. Talk me through the fight, and especially the knockdown, Dicky. Oh, um, now nah, before the fight and everything, and when we got in there, he was being cocky. I was talking to him. Then the first rounds came, and I said, "Come on, Ray, you're not in the pro. You're not in the amateurs now. It's the pros." You know, I was the cocky one. But um, he's a great fighter. 
And you've seen him since, haven't you? You and him talking about the, the knockdown? Oh, I've seen him a lot of times, yeah. He, he called me up. Um, I think he was the only one to call me up wishing me Happy New Year. Oh, that's After nice I got my it? surgery and I was sitting in the house all by myself. <laughs> Well, listen, Dickie, you know, uh, the people, when they come over, I know they're going to be in for a special night because it'll be nice to, to be nice for the British public to pay to see... Oh, I love the fans over there. Brilliant. I can't wait to see my Brits. And it'll be, it'll be <laughs> my Brits. And you can, get, you can actually get that cup of tea. Dickie Eklund, it's a pleasure having you on the show. We'll speak to your brother, Mickey, soon, and we'll see you soon. Thanks very much indeed. Cracker. 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 Absolute <laughs> cracker. It's a cracker. Uh, l let me tell you something, Neil. It may not all be thrills, spills and laughs, you know. You may mm. get some serious oh, we know. We're and fairly prepared. dark moments of during course, this. Of yeah. course. Nothing but wrong with that, though. No, of course. That's what life's all about. It's not about a fairy tale, is it? That's what no. people have got to understand. And people go through ups and downs in life. And that's one of the reasons why I chose doing mm. the tour with them. Because a lot of people might be able to relate to this. I mean, it might not be to that extent. But, but these are genuinely... The I mean, the, the one thing that that film portrayed was passion and family. Mm. You know, and that's... Family isn't always great. And I think that's the lovely thing about that film. I mean, my mum watched that film. And my mum isn't exactly young and she's not a massive boxing fan but at the end of it she was crying her eyes out yeah and it's a great film i mean that's what you people want when they watch an audience with they just want to see yeah a little bit of reality yeah i think i think they do and not yeah. just glitz and yeah. booze i yeah. mean uh, yeah. you know i've done too many of them where it's just about glitz booze and buying a glove you have i've done loads of them <laughs> i've done i've listen i've done about 30 nights on the road with fighters really? and i tell you what all of them are instantly forgettable Really? Yeah. Really? They're garbage. They're horrible. I'll be no, honest with you. No, this is going to be a night to remember. I it's think it lot, will be. Yeah, there's a lot of surprises on the nights. We've got a few yeah. surprises, especially for Mickey and Dickie, to Good. meet a few old faces. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going, to be, it's going to be an interesting night as well. No, I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced it'll be an interesting night. You know, because their mother died shortly after I know. the film came That's out. Who I, I mean, yeah. when I did the actual booking, I went for Mickey, Dickie and the mum. But then she and then they told me she passed away. Yeah, she had passed. She passed quite soon. Yeah, quite soon after. Okay, so listen, Nina, we, we've we've had you in to talk about that. That's coming up. That's all going to be over in May. What's coming up in June and July? You got any more show? Any more promotions coming up? And don't start publicising bouncers against bouncers. Tell me about proper bouncers stuff. Bouncers against bouncers. You know what I mean. I'm being. I'm being I can't. Kind. I'm not in. I, I'm on. There's a few things coming up. I said to you before. Um, and uh, you know. There's a few little surprises, so Good. I will be back at giving Box Nation the exclusive. Yeah, I don't mind you going elsewhere every night. <laughs> for the BBC, make a documentary about you. Uh, uh, now, listen, that, that, that show... With the boys from the fighter will be good. There's freedom of venue. You can go to touch gloves. Touch, touch glove promotions. Touch, co uk. Go to touch glove promotions. Yeah. co. uk. Well, listen. Thanks to Nina who's come in. Thanks to Dicky who picked up the telephone. Thanks to John Murray who came on. Thankfully, we didn't show pictures of Rios beating him, and I'm pleased about that. Frank Wom was in the studio. Kel.